So we're going to do the phylogeny of vertebrates. Um, remember what I did earlier about, I, I took the, the filter system, I talked about the taxa. How if you had, so let's do the kitty cat, right? And we divide our, our kitty cat into different taxa or different groups based on what they have. Yeah, you get the magic book. Good job. Um, so it breaks it all down. So the cat is obviously an animal. It's not a fungus. It's not, right? So, and I, just, I described it about how the kingdom is like one large section. And you can take those kingdoms and divide them into six different kingdoms, which is the, the animals, the plants, the fungus, the protist, the uh, bacteria, and the archaea bacteria. Okay? And then where do you go from there? And then you do a little smaller, and then you do phylum. And what phylum is kitty cats are, are in? What's it say? Chordata. Chordata. What's chordata mean? Take the auda out. What is it? A cord. Where do we have a cord? Spinal cord. Everything that's in chordata. And then we get a little smaller. So kingdom, phylum. And then we say, okay, now we're going to look at the class. What class are kitty cats in? Mammalias. So if they're in mammalias, that means they are mammals. So kitty cats are warm-blooded. They have placental birth. They, uh, they, they feed their young with milk. They have hair, just like a whale. Okay? So kingdom, phylum, class, order. Carnivores. They eat meat. They have pointy teeth. Right? So kitty cats and doggies and, and, and bears are all carnivores, or in a carnivora, in order. Okay? So kingdom, phylum, class, order. Family. What family is it? Felidase. Felidae. And Felidae means what? Feline. So this is all the cats. So this is anything between a, a, a kitty cat that plays with the curtain rod to a lion. Okay? Curtain rod. Okay? And then the family then gets even smaller into a genus. So Felis which actually means cat in Latin. And then you go all the way down to even smaller, called a species. species. A domesticus. So we would call this a felis. Sorry, oops. Let's capitalize that. Let's do this right. So we call this kitty cat a felis domesticus. Anyone know Latin in here? Yes. You know lots of Latin, right? What have y'all heard the word domesticus? Or what have y'all heard the word domestic? Domestic. Home, domesticated, of the house. So felis domesticus, all that means is just a house cat. That's all it means. Why would we go through and and classify it this way? Why would we just say, oh, that's a cat, and that's a dog, and that's a bear, and and all these different groups? What? They're the same thing. What makes a cat a cat? Um, okay, it's traits, it's characters. Okay, so cats, what's the one that, y'all know what the main difference between the paw of a cat and the paw of a dog is? There you go. Yeah, cats, cats have retractable claws. So the difference between the order, okay, so we, we went class, which is mammalia, and then order, which is carnivora, and then family, which is felidae, right? The difference between Felidae family, the difference between Felidae family and Canidae family, which is the canine, is retractable. is retractable claws. One of the main differences is the retractable claws. The only one that is a retractable claw is a cheetah. Yeah. Do what? Yeah, it's cats have retractable claws. This whole classification schema. Right here, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. That whole classification schema, that's all about classifying modern day creatures. Okay? Now, we can classify ancient creatures as well within this within the schema, but don't don't see this as a, a way to to see evolution. Okay, because I know we're talking about evolution, but you also gotta understand that yeah, you could actually classify, you know, dinosaurs within this classification system. 
Don't ask me how to do that because I'm not sure. But, you know, you could still classify dinosaurs within the animal kingdom and classify them within the phylum chordata. And then the class, probably reptilian, right? Because they're reptiles. Specific dinosaurs. Now, other dinosaurs, you might have to class them towards the avian uh, uh, class of, of birds. But this is the way we classify them. Um, you all remember on that little reading, we talked about the Linnaean Society? Linnaean Society? Yes. Okay. That was from Carl, Carl Linnaeus, and he's actually the guy that came up with this whole classification system. Okay. Um, if y'all, do you all know the little, uh, uh, what's it called, acronym for this? Here's what the one I know. Because you know, I've covered this before in like seventh grade science, right? King of the final class origin of species. Yeah. I always remember King... Philip came over for good soup. Okay. I good soup. That's all I remember. Okay, whatever it is that reminds you about the system is is a really good way to kind of remember it. Because here's here's the way the question is going to look. It's going to say this question is going to say if a creature is in the family. Okay. If you have a creature that's in the same family, it also has to be in what? And it'll say, it'll say genus, order, species. If it's in the same family, it also has to be in what else as well? The same. So it's going to be the same genus or the same order? It has to be in the same order. Because when you go down to, to, to genus, it then differentiates. Okay? So that's the way you have to kind of keep this in mind. Is that, is that, when we're going, again, like, you notice how the way I drew my boxes, it's really big up here, but it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's not because I'm a bad artist, which I am, but it's, it's because I'm trying to show you how it's getting more and more limited, right? The animal kingdom is huge. The phylum chordata is still pretty huge. The, 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 uh, the class mammalia is still pretty huge, because you've got anything between humans to um, <coughs> wombats, all right? The order... Uh, the order of carnivora, carnivora is still pretty huge. You got anything from bears to, to cats. The family Felidae is still pretty large because you've got all kinds of different cats. Okay, but then when you get down to actually Felis and then Felis domesticus, then you get very, very specific about what kind of cat are we talking about. Okay? So that's a cat. Well, what kind of cat is it? Well, it's a, it's a small cat. Okay, well, there's lots of small cats. You know, which specific cat? And then what's the benefit of doing something in Latin? No. Why, why, are, why is science written in Latin? It was one of the first written, one of the first written languages. Not one of the first written languages, but the most spread written language. Tell the, okay, yeah, a lot of the root words in the practice of science. But if, if I'm here and I'm talking to another scientist in, in, in Russia or in Spain or whatever, and I say cat, here it's cat, what's in Spain? Gato. Oh, so Latin is kind of like a universal language. Latin is a universal language. Do we, does anyone, does, yeah, does anyone speak Latin anymore? No. No, there is not a single country in this world that speaks Latin. All right, it is a dead language. The only way it's still alive is merely by an written form. <clears throat> and so it's a, it's a science language. It's the universal language. If I write in Latin, if I write this, you know, if I say, y'all go, let's go look out the blue bonnets, what do y'all think of? Flowers, okay. So you're thinking of a, a flower that looks like this. Let me let me draw a really bad picture of a blue vine. All right, blue, bad picture of a blue vine. Kind of looks like this, and it's got nice little blue flowers that hang down like this, right? That's a blue vine, right? Yeah, it is. It's a blue vine. Oh, oh, oh. You're, so you're talking about a Texas blue vine. That's, okay. So you're thinking about this right here, right? Where it's like sticking up, and it's got little flippy things like that, right? Okay, yeah. So if you're in England, this is what blue bonnet looks like. Yeah, it's actually a nice, lovely flower. There you go. So if I said, "Hey, I found this really cool little genetic change in the blue bonnets," and I sent it off to my friend in England, and they looked at it in Cambridge, they were thinking I'm talking about this guy, not this guy. Okay. So I said, "Hey, did y'all catch what the Aggies did? They made maroon blue bonnets." The guy in Cambridge is going to say, "Why would you make this flower maroon?" 
us in Texas, we understand that's better to make everything maroon. But um, you have to make sure that you use a scientific term because there, there could be a, a misconception. Right? So you need to know about this idea of, of taxonomic classification. Sorry. Like they make the flowers and then they plant them at UT? Yes. Yeah. So remember earlier, y'all hold off on, on talk, we'll kind of cover some of this in a second. Um, y'all remember earlier I said, okay, well, here's the taxonomy, here's your, your levels. Um, so it's King Philip, uh, King Philip came over for good soup. It's really Dr. King Philip came over for good soup because um, when I was in school, it was just kingdom, phylum, class, or genus, species. Um, when, certain, when some teachers across the street were in school, they actually only had two kingdoms. It was either an animal or a plant. If it, if it lived on the ground or somewhere near the ground, it was a plant. If it moved, it was an animal. Okay? Literally, that's how much it's changed over the past 50 years or whatever. Okay? Um, now they have what's called a domain. And so you could have domain eukarya. You could have uh, uh, a domain uh, either eukarya or archaea. Um, and then you go from domain to kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Okay? So it's actually Dr. King Philip. Because he's a doctor and a king. Um, so that's how we would be able to classify that. So y'all did things that y'all looked at, at things like this, right? What do we say that was similar between all these? The structure. The structure. Okay, so we would say these are all what kind of analogous or homologous structures? Homologous, right? Because they're all the same. The structure themselves are the same, but the use of them are different. And so that's where you're going to find the differences. What are some differences? Well, what does a whale use its structure, its foreline for? So what I mean, what does a frog use its forelimb for? Well, the, the back is really, or the back is for hopping, the front is really for state of stability. What about a pig? Walking, basically. Okay. And notice that they are on their toes. They're not actually on their feet. If I had a, a human foot up here, that would be pulled forward because they're actually designed for walking. A pig and a dog and a cat are actually designed for running. Okay. To what? All right, so tell me, and I want you to go ahead and kind of jot this down. So use your similarities, use your differences. Um, so tell me, answer this question. How, by looking at structures like this, by looking at structures like this, how does this show the idea of phylogeny? Which phylogeny is basically classifying, structure, classifying organisms to show evolutionary relationships. So how do we use phylogeny to classify organisms by showing evolutionary or showing evolutionary relationship by, by classifying structures? It shows that they have the same like, bones and structure and everything that they're used for Very good. Yeah. So yeah, they, they have the same structure. And you want to go ahead and write this down. That okay. so we all carry the same common ancestor, and that common ancestor can be seen by having very similar structures. Okay, so that's basically what that says, but you can briefen that down <coughs> to the idea that all that we all come from the same common ancestor, and this can be seen because we all have shared characteristics. So you're going to take this chart, again, Copy this chart down just real quick, down to your, your notebook. Don't get too crazy on me. The zeros, again, represent things that they don't have. The ones represent things that they do have. And if you want to be really quick about it, basically, wherever there's a one, I would just put an X. If there's nothing there, if there's a zero, don't put anything at all. That's all I've always seen in the chart. There are a lot of charts There are. In science, we use lots of graphs and, and tables and diagrams. Is there a class we take in high school for, like, future science? Like, that chart, we're going to actually build to this chart, okay? So, give me just a second. Um, so, you've got this chart, and why, why do they have lamprey listed already? Why does it only have, like, why is it on the very lowest part? Okay, yeah. Lampreys are the only ones that only have one shared characteristic. So what we're going to do is we're going to develop this tree. And what is going to happen as we go up this tree? Okay, it's going to get more and more what? Shared characteristics. So if here's your chart, 
And we're going to go up. What's going to be on the next line? Uh, yeah, the frog. Okay. Now, what has happened between the development of a lamprey, which is a, a jawless fish, it actually lay, lands on the side of a shark and just basically connects to the shark and just swims along and hangs on to the shark, and a frog. What has it developed? Four limbs. So if you see on the bottom, if you see on the bottom, the bottom is what characteristic is what's developing. So everything above that, that forelimb section will have forelimbs. Okay? So what's the next developed characteristic? Amniotic sac or amniotic egg. Okay? An amniotic egg, all that really means is basically an egg that has amniotic a sac in it. Um, an amniotic sac is something that was developed that way you could get away from the water. So what's our creature that has the amniotic sac and four limbs? A bird. Okay. Anything else? And a whale. Okay, anything else? And a pig. And a human. But do whales, pigs, and humans have something more than a bird does? Yes. What do they have? Okay, so they have body hair. So the next developed shared characteristic is body hair. Now, does a frog have body hair? No, no because if a frog had body hair, we'd put it above the body hair section. Okay? Now, what are we going to put here? Human? Wait, why are y'all saying both of them? Well, because pig doesn't have Well, the first one I saw was a bunch of people. But doesn't it? Pig doesn't have pelvic, but well, does. All right. But do, do humans have uh, pelvic ruminants? Oh, no, it's like a DD. There you go. So, y'all see what I did with the line? I drew the line up and then I split it into a Y. Because be what we're going to do is we're going to put both pigs and humans in our Y. So, there's a human in there. I'm going to extend this out a little more. Here's our pig. Because they have the same characteristics, so that we're going to classify in the same area. Big pigs and humans are both what? What what class? Mammals, right? And what's the difference between mammals like pigs and humans and mammals like uh, uh, whales and dolphins and porpoises is what? The pelvic ruminants. Let me read that. So go is on the top. A whale. What do you think that line represents, that arrow going up? We're showing what here? We're showing development. development of evolution, right? So evolution is a change of genes of a, of a, or of a population over time. Nope. Remember, evolution does not mean we're developing towards a better creature. We're merely just developing because of natural selection. Because they started living in an aquatic environment. So that's why wells developed. So instead of that vertical line that we had, again, back on this page, okay, we're going to have this branch tree. And so if you ever go to something like the, if you go to the Perot Museum on the biology floor, there's this gigantic lighted table. They have this tree. But it's trees for almost every single organism in the entire earth. Okay? And every single time there's a branch there's a new change to that, that, there's a new characteristic of that organism. So when we said, okay, the difference between lampreys and frogs was the forelimbs. There's the branch. So every vertical branch that then splits apart is a new development. So vertical branch, amniotic egg, new development. All right. So you all remember where we split it? Right here was the body, uh, uh, body hair, right? And the pig, now their pig is right here on the double pulley at, at ankle, okay? This one, they split right there. Now, tell me, which one is the most correct tree up here? And these trees also, if you want to look in your book, these trees are all on page 457. How, I bought this number one, number two, or number three? Two. Two? 
Why are y'all saying one? Or why are y'all saying two? What are y'all saying? I caught different numbers. Because it just looks good? Cool. So you're... I would leave it ready because well and human are on the same one. Okay. So you're saying what, number one? I'm saying number two. You're saying two? Well and human are on the same. So you're saying they have the same... They, you're saying that a pig is missing a derived characteristic that a well and a human have. So hypothesis one has human and pig grouped together. Did did the whale does whales have something that the pigs and humans have? Yeah. On that chart? Yes. Whales have body hair, right? Yeah. We've got chin hair, nose hair. Okay. Do pigs and humans have something that the whales do not have though? Yeah. They've got a fully functioning hip bone. Okay. What about down here? Does that one allow for it? Basically it's number one. It's gotta be one, right? Okay. So you say we, we took the evidence that we found and we rationalized it with a reasoning. Do what? Whales? No, they're all they're all uh, stiff. They're, all their joints have been fused. All right. So um, yeah. All right. Um, so, do you understand this idea of a tree and wherever it comes from? The taxa, and it's all related. Okay? That was the goal of the day. Was it day, was to take this it was right here. It's how you can test a tree hypothesis for a group of taxa. Okay? And that's basically what's going on, is that when, when we develop, when, when scientists develop evolutionary trees, or they develop developmental trees, they're going to say, here's all the trees, here's all the information, and then they look at the information, and they say, does that information relate to the tree? Okay, so then if you go back to a... So then you go back to something like this, then that's going to allow you to kind of test that hypothesis. Okay, so here's your different hypothesis. You look at the facts that, we, that are, are given to you, and you're able to complete a, an evolutionary tree from that. Okay. And then you can work on them individually. So again, you're going to do questions number one, three, and four on the analysis questions. Number one, it says, how would fossil evidence provide additional support for the statement in step three? So step three is the one that says this. You find fossil evidence that relates to this, this, this uh, phrase right here, where all the taxes share a common ancestor that have four lands with similar structures, the taxa gradually evolve as certain features enable them to take advantage of the opportunities in the environment. So think back to where, if you have a fossil, how would a fossil provide evidence to this understanding? Okay? Again, think about the fossils we've looked at. Where have we looked at a fossil where the taxa, or the group of individuals, shares a common ancestor that has four limbs sim with similar structure, and this, this taxa, or this group of, of similar structures, gradually evolves to a certain features enable them to take advantage of the opportunities in their environment. What does it mean by environment? What's your environment? Where you're at, where you live, what's going on. So if we found extra fossils, how would that support this idea? Okay, so that's number one. Number three... Number three says this. Based on your tree you choose... Okay, so we all chose which one? The the one with the white fox around, right? Or hypothesis one. Yeah. Y'all just have a white fox. Okay. So based on hypothesis one's tree, so back on that, that previous page, 457. Okay. Based on your tree you choose, which one uh, which are more closely related to humans, birds or frogs? Support your evidence. Support your decision with evidence. Um, which are more distantly related to birds, humans, or lampreys? And then which group shares a more recent common ancestor with whales, pigs, or humans? Okay? And if you don't agree with number one being the correct one, tell me which one you chose. So say, I chose, you know, I chose hypothesis one, I chose hypothesis two, I chose hypothesis three. And again, you're going to go back to these, these hypotheses. Okay? Now, tell me. Can I look up here real quick? Which one's more uh, closely related to this bird? 
This frog or this pig? The pig. Okay. And and the reason here's here's the reason why. Um, time is progressing this way. Okay. So as you move from left to right, most of the time time is going to progress. So the idea is that basically as time progresses, that you're moving further away from the the relative, like the frog, because you're moving closer to the relative like the whale. Okay, so the closer relative is going to be the one. Now, here's a little easier question. We're looking at the bird. Okay, which one's more re related, the lamprey or the pig? The pig, obviously, because how many steps do you have to go? Well, you have to go one step, two steps to get to the bird. See, actually only one step, but to get to the lamprey, you have to go one step, two steps to get to the bird. So it's only one step from the pig to the bird, but it's two steps from the lamprey to the bird. So obviously the, 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 the pig is going to be much more related. Okay. And then question number four. <clears throat> so it says, based on the portion of the tree shown below. So this tree right here, again, it's in your book. What can you say about the relationship of taxa X, so the organism X, so the group of organisms at X, to horses and humans. So how does X relate to horses? And how does it relate to humans? What is it missing? Or what does it have relation to horses? And what does it have or missing that's in relation to the human? Okay, so one, three, and four questions are. Once you get done, let's turn up here in the front, please. <clears throat>